Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Brandon Phillips. I'm Mark Akinosho. Uh, Victor Rosina. Chris Montesco. Um, as Professor Bachman just mentioned, we are um, presenting a solar power turbine line control system. It's an alternative energy system basically designed to um, harvest solar power um, to recharge your charging batteries for an entire year to irrigate 10 feet of linear land. Um, the problem that we had um, was to develop a self sustaining solar power turbine line irrigation system. By self sustaining we mean that it will run by itself after initial setup for an entire year without or with minimal um, supervision from the user. Um, the motivation for this particular project was um, public water supply is in danger. Overuse of natural resources are basically causing um, there to be restrictions in things placed on demand water usage. So we developed a solution that we think um, would be um, capable of fixing this particular situation. So um, the solar power to a irrigation system is what we're designing. Um, we respond to the soil moisture, so there's different levels of moisture for the soil. Um, and depending on what that much level is, we um, irrigate away. Um, it's also, it's also um, customizable by the user. So therefore, there is a user interface where the user can input settings and things of that nature to determine when the soil should be um, irrigated. This is a system level block diagram. Um, the major components are outlined here in these boxes. We have power, which basically um, allows our system to be turned on and off. We have processor, which basically is the brain of our entire system, it includes all the logic, which determines whether or not the system will irrigate away. Um, we have moisture sensors, which are placed in the soil, which report the moisture levels of the soil to the processor so that it can determine the things that we need to do. Um, the output from the processor, um, the inputs to the processor, I'm sorry, come from the user interface. They get to um, set four different settings. The current time, which is the time that they initially set up their system, polling time, which is the time um, the user wants the system to check the soil moisture every day. And they also have uh, the moisture threshold, which is either low, medium, or high, depending on the user's um, specification. If it's low, of course, if the soil moisture is very dry, then it will want to reach water. If it's medium, that it means it's low or medium in the water. And if it's high, then it's low, medium, and it's low water. Um, it also has water duration. So that specifies the number of times that the control valve, which is about here, will be open. So basically, the main functionality of the control valve is to release water from the system or to contain water. Next is the design methods and tools. Our design method was kind of simple. To, our design method was to implement the customer requirements using hardware and software that we were already familiar with. For example, we implemented the Motorola AC microprocessor and development board, which was already taught in um, EC450, a microprocessor class of EU. So most of the members of our team was already familiar with it. Um, Altium designed it. We use it to design our PCB board, and there was a seminar taught by the EC464 staff on how to design our PCB board and schematics. SolidWorks is what we used to implement our system case to cut and design our interface lids and everything. Um, the Aquanet plus slash valve, we decided that last semester based upon proposals and also the watermark moisture sensor. Next is the watermark moisture sensor. The reason the watermark moisture sensor was chosen was because of its durability and it was inexpensive and it was also easy to use. It requires a supply voltage of 5 volts and current of 1 million. It outputs um, analog voltage signal from 200 millivolts to 900 millivolts. And this is all depends on the moisture level in the soil. So it would output a voltage of 200 to 400, which is a low threshold, 400 to 600, which is a medium threshold, and 600 to 900, which is a high threshold. It sends an analog signal to the microcontroller, which sends a um, conversion using an A to B converter. Next is the microcontroller. As I mentioned previously in um, this discussion, the microcontroller is basically the brain of this entire system. It computes all the logic, it determines when the control valve should be opened and closed. It also um, takes in the user input um, and stores them into variables where they can later retrieve. And it also 
So basically, our microcontroller comes with a development board. The development board has different um, items on there that you can use to test different scenarios. So basically, we had to use the development board to program our microcontroller. Um, it's the HES12C32 microcontroller. As Mark mentioned, we did use that in the previous class in C450. So it was a great choice for us since we had prior knowledge on how to use that um, particular component and um, the learning curve wouldn't be too high for us. So it was definitely a great investment. And we also, um, it would be cheap for us to use and since this is supposed to be a low cost system, it would be cheap to use since we already have it. Um, it reacts on moisture readings from the soil. So basically, there's the moisture sensor that Mark was previously talking about is placed in the ground. And it's going to take its readings and report them to this microcontroller, which is then going to determine whether or not, when during polling time, if that threshold has been met. If it has, then um, you can know the criteria for removing the water so the, the soil or not. Um, the decision is kind of based on user settings. So like we said, the user does get the input for more different settings. Current time, the uh, polling time, the water duration, and the moisture threshold. So basically, um, when the user sets their current time of day and they set their polling time, and every day when the, point, when the polling time is reached, they will compare that time to the current time. If they're equal, it then asks the moisture sensor, okay, so what is your value? They will compare it to the moisture threshold that the user has set, and then if they um, compare, then if you know that is true, then it's going to open the drill valve for this water to the system. Else it will not open, and then it will wait for the next polling period. Um, so basically, the control signals for this microcontroller come from the user. So it definitely has a very good um, user-friendly user interface, which we will cover later in this discussion. Um, the output from this is a big print the LCD. Um, it will read in moisture from the moisture sensor, and it will also be from the control valve. This is the state diagram that we have for our entire system. So the moment that the user turns on the power, the power comes on, and then the LCD screen turns on. So now the user is presented with these four different times that they have an input. The current time, the water and time, the water duration, and the moisture threshold. So the user will input those settings. Those settings will then be stored by the microcontroller. So then it will wait for the um, polling time. Once the polling time is reached, then we're here. So we're going to pull the moisture sensor to determine whether or not it should open the controller. Um, it receives its input from the control uh, from the moisture sensor as an analog system, um, as an analog signal. Sorry, and that analog signal um, is converted to DC um, by the analog to digital converter that is built into the microcontroller, which is another reason why this was a great choice for us to use this microcontroller. Um, so once it converts that signal to zero to one or zero, so then um, it determines whether or not it will reduce water. It will be a one if it has to reduce water. So then. That means yes. Otherwise, we need know and then we'll wait for the next period. So if it's a yes, which means yes, it's time for you to water this, the, for this system to irrigate the land. So we'll move here, compare the polling time to the water time, and then um, the microcontroller will send a digital to the signal to open the control valve. So based on the state of the control valve, we will either open or close. So in this case, since it's a yes, it's going to open the place, and the water comes in from the water this um, the land for the specified duration. Okay, we have the settings that are predetermined. It's five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, all the way up to about approximately two hours. So we have up to two hours that you can watch the system. Um, then the microcontroller will close the control valve and then wait for the next polling period. Where then we'll repeat the process. Power. With the uh, microprocessor that we chose for easy to use access and also a short learning time came with a, a big disadvantage. It was a little more high power than we wanted to do. So in order to overcome this challenge, we implemented a power system that uses two 9 volt, two 25 milliamp solar panels and five AA rechargeable batteries. The system obviously uses renewable energy. The solar panels will power the system and if additional energy is needed, the batteries will be implemented. If the solar panels have extra extra energy, they will charge the batteries. The voltage in the current of the system are regulated to protect the components, the batteries, 